Hi, this is Andre. The Boss Loop Station series is probably the most successful, popular, widely used type of looping device out there, and it's also one of the very last things I thought that I would be talking about in this video series. One of the main objectives for my looping videos has been to try and spotlight and popularize functions and features and approaches that are not so widely used, and you can't really get more widely used than the Boss Loop Station series. So what happened was a friend of mine who's a very fine looping musician got in touch with me a little while ago and asked if I could do some consulting with them while they were putting together a rig based around the RC500 and some MIDI control. At the time they were using the X-Tone Pro MIDI controller. I told them straight up that I did not have any experience with either of those devices at all, but they assured me that they were interested in my input and we also both agreed that it would be good for me to check out some different gear that I wasn't so familiar with. So I ended up borrowing the RC500 and the X-Tone so that I could try and dig into the details of how they work. And I ended up being very surprised because there are some features hidden in the RC500 that I really found myself falling in love with. These are not conventional run-of-the-mill types of phrase sampling loop things. So there are two features in particular we're going to be spotlighting in this video. The first is time stretching, which is being able to change the speed of a loop without changing the pitch. And what I found, much to my surprise and delight, is that when you start slowing the loop down to extremely slow values, the time stretch algorithm starts imposing these very rhythmic granular kinds of patterns onto the loop content that I love the sound of. The second thing we're going to be looking at are what are called loop effects. Now these are not audio effects in the conventional sense like reverb or delay or chorus. These are different ways of chopping up the loop into different fragments and then playing back those fragments in different sorts of ways. The two types of loop effects we're looking at in this video are repeat, which is basically like a stutter, and scatter, which is basically taking different fragments of the loop and playing them back in different sorts of patterns. We're going to have three separate demonstrations here. The first one is just looking at the loop effects in the most basic sense. The second one is going to get into using two loops that are synchronized together with more extreme kind of time stretching things. And the third example is going to be a little crazier and a little more of a mad scientist routine, looking at two loops that are not the same length, not synchronized, and having one of them responding to all kinds of crazy things while the other one just keeps doing its thing.
At one point during the creation of this video, I posted a brief clip on social media and asked people to try and guess which looping device was making the sound, and no one guessed it. No one even came close to identifying it as a boss pedal. And I don't blame them. I would not have guessed that a boss pedal would do these kinds of sounds either. So I'm really pleasantly surprised. I have mixed feelings about the popularity of looping devices in general. It's been a little bittersweet to see looping become so widely known and widely used over the last couple of decades for various reasons that I will bore you with in a different video. Long story short, I generally have not paid attention to a lot of more mainstream loopers simply because their feature set doesn't seem that interesting to me. I'm not saying that you can't make good music with them. Some of my favorite looping musicians use boss looping gear. But for me personally as a creator, I found that the lack of features was generally not something that I found very inspiring. So to find this kind of stuff hiding inside of a loop station pedal was a huge surprise and a really, really nice one. Anything that gets more unconventional functions and features in the hands of music Positions so that they can actually work with them and use them on their own and see how they sound, I'm in favor of. So I don't know exactly how these types of functions got squeezed into a loop station pedal, but I'm really, really glad that they did. And I'm very happy to acknowledge that a line of pedals that I have not been taking very seriously and not paid a lot of attention to actually warrants a lot more attention from myself than I would have guessed. I had to return the RC500 the day after I did this filming, but there's a lot more that I would like to do with it and dig into, so we'll see if that happens in the future. Um, as always, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm trying not to do a sales pitch to boss artist representatives. Thank you for tuning in. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.